Hello YouTube and welcome to yet another After Effects tip. Today we're going over the next effect in this series. It is called Blocks. Let's jump right into After Effects. I'll show you where to find it and an application of how to use it. First things first, let's take a look at what we are making today. It is a simple cut transition with some sharks and some Finding Nemo random footage that I have uh, and here's the transition what's cool about this is we use an effect under the backgrounds preset so today we're showing an application of the background presets that's not necessarily a background if you want to see another application check out the last video and you'll learn about a way you can use these background presets as a background but we're making a transition, so we're gonna go to our compositions folder. If you don't have that, just make one, and we'll create a new composition. Call this tutorial comp. 1920 by 1080, frame rate's 30. Resolution for the playback is gonna be a quarter, just cause my computer is a big baby, and I want this to go quick for you guys. So, we'll bring our footage on to the timeline. We'll cut at about halfway down, let me bring the shark footage above, and then, or no, let bring the fish footage above. So we have our cut right there, simple enough, and we need to add a solid. To do that, we'll hit Control Y on the keyboard, and then we will add our blocks preset. To find that, we'll go into our effects presets, and we'll go to animation presets, backgrounds and blocks drop that there and you'll see it's just some blocks animating getting wider and narrower whatever else pretty cool so to turn this into an animation tr transition sort of thing we'll go to the center of the cut and position our keyframes 20 frames before the end or before the cut and 24 frames after the cut 20 frames after the cut so we'll hit shift and then page up to go backwards on our timeline drag our initial keyframes hold shift to lock or snap to our playhead shift page down four times and we'll bring our final keyframes to the very end at the very beginning of the keyframes, we with the layer selected, we'll hit Alt, left bracket to trim our layer, and then we'll go to the end of the keyframes and trim the right side by Alt, right bracket. Great. To turn this into our animation preset, we'll first need to turn off the tritone, which is something that comes with this preset originally. So just turn that off, black and white. Great. We'll bump the contrast down a little bit, just so it, we're getting a little bit more black. We'll have to make a keyframe at the beginning, at the initial uh, portion of the animation. We'll hit U to reveal our new keyframe of brightness. We'll go to the very center where our cut would be. We're gonna bring this back up and then We'll go to the very end, and this is where the magic is gonna happen. We'll turn it down on the very end, so then we can't see the animation anymore. So it'll come in and come out. Great. Then what we'll do to actually see what's going on, we'll go to our blending mode, and we'll go to classic color dodge. Wow, our footage reveals itself. Think about the screen modes, um, or the blending modes rather. Anything under the screen will typically get rid of the black. So color dodge will get rid of it. Screen will get rid of it. Classic color dodge will get rid of it. And they'll do a little uh, different things based on the one that you choose. So just gr screen will keep everything as close to the original colors. But if we switch it to classic color dodge, it adds a little bit more of a contrasty look which is what I was going for with this effect so classic color dodge or screen whatever works for you next 
what we'll do is we will go to our effects and presets once again and we'll type in colorama and we'll drop that oh no it's red but we'll fix a couple of things hello carter goodbye um video games are fun am i right so we'll need to change the output cycle to do that under the colorama we'll go into the output cycle and we'll change these colors on this color wheel here and what it's looking at is the black and white and the levels of black and white that we'll see in the original composition of this effect so just to give you an idea of what's happening we'll turn the colorama off and just turn the blending mode off just to see what's happening you see how it's black in some areas and it's white in some areas and it's gray and darker grays and lighter grays and everything in between that is what colorama is animating based on the phase of color based on the grayness so we'll turn that back on we'll turn the blending mode back on to classic color dodge we're getting that weird red effect so the initial portion of the color wheel is going to be the very top we'll click that red portion and we'll turn that black and everything comes back through we'll adjust these colors to be anything you want so i want this white down here to actually be a red i'm gonna get rid of this pink purple i'll move this blue on the side i'll get rid of this yellow drag the green down then what we can do is we can alt click on the uh, I'm sorry control click on the little arrows and we can add some more colors throughout it so let's add another yellow over there and then a red over there so it just kinda gives it a little bit more life Let's add one more red. It's kind of like all over the place. But what we'll see now is if we go to the very beginning of the composition, where the transition begins, and then we play it back, and it has that sort of digitally color effect. Now, it's a little slow right now, so we'll do a couple things to the animation. First, we'll select the brightness keyframes. We'll hit F9 to first easy ease them, and then we'll click on the graph editor, which is this little button right here. And we'll hit the fit all graphs to view, and we'll just pull our handles, not fully, but maybe like 80% towards. So what's happening is the uh, brightness is getting really bright and the speed of it moving bright is going really fast and it slows down as it gets to the center and it's at its peak brightness in the center and then we'll just do the same thing to the other side so it starts slow ends fast and voila. so obviously it's not that much of a change but we'll go to the rest of these keyframes and we will hit F9 and then we'll go back into the graph editor and now we have all of our other properties that were affected selected. Just to make sure we select one side we'll box and select our keyframes on the left and pull that up to a hundred percent maybe like 95 percent. At the center of the cut we want our peaks to be at the center of the cut, where the cut actually happens. So we'll select all the keyframes on the right, pull those towards, and now what's going to happen is it's going to start really, really slow, and then as it transitions, it'll go really fast and then come out. So let's actually play that back in real time. You know, maybe we could slow that down just a little bit so it's not so crazy fast because we still want to see something, but right there. Alright, let's play this back. 
not bad. So this is obviously a very basic setup with the, just this one effect, but to give it a little bit more life, we'll do one more thing. We'll hit Control Alt Y on our keyboard, make a new adjustment layer, Control Alt down arrow to bring it below our digital glitch effect. Alt left bracket to trim it to the left, Alt right bracket to trim it to the right. We'll go to our effects and presets, look up CC radial fast blur. And what's happening is if we bring this way up, it has this sort of like blur effect where it comes towards us. And then what we'll do is at the very beginning, we'll set the amount to zero. Then we'll go to the center of the cut. We'll set the amount to say 100, eh, too much. Uh, let's say 30, too little. Just find that sweet spot, maybe 60. And then we'll go to the very end and we'll set that back to zero. Set it to brightest. So it's only blurring the brightest portions. And then what we're gonna do is go back into the graph editor and we'll do the same thing that we were doing with the other layer, well, F9, all those keyframes. And we'll just bring the animation happening at the cut so it's a little bit faster. Faster, faster. And blur in, blur out. So let's play this back in real time. So that's a quick transition that you can use in less than five minutes using a preset that's already built into After Effects. Saves you a lot of time. Once again, this is the Blocks preset. You can find that under Animation Presets and then Backgrounds and Blocks. And it's, it's really cool because we turn something that looked like this, Control Y, make a new solid, just to see what we had to start with. This basic effect, we changed a couple of things and we made this simple transition. I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments down below. If you could hit that like button or if you have any feedback, I always appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. And in that next tutorial, we'll be covering, let's see, cinders. Maybe we'll do some text or something. I don't know. But until next time, my name is John Jagnes, John Jags Knee, and I will see you then.